Weight loss is a billion dollar industry. So why are one in three Americans still considered overweight? There are thousands of people getting rich selling you weight loss plans and tactics, but they aren't working. Clearly, people are still struggling with weight loss. So what are you supposed to do? Are you just supposed to resign yourself to a life of yo-yo dieting and gaining and losing weight back and forth until you inevitably die? Absolutely not. Today, I have three tips for you that helped me lose 70 pounds that I know are going to help you on your weight loss journey. So let's get started with tip number one, making and sticking to a plan. One of the biggest problems that I see when I coach people through a weight loss journey or when I attempt a weight loss journey myself is making a plan and then about two weeks in, completely scrapping the plan, thinking that this plan isn't really gonna work. So let me tweak some things here or there so that I can actually make a real plan. Spinning your wheels does nothing for you when you're in the thick of a weight loss journey. Trust the plan that you have made. Now, in order to trust that plan, you do have to do some work at the front end. And that means actually taking the time to educate yourself on some of the tools and tactics that you can use when you're making a plan. Are you going to use if it fits your macros? Are you going to be rigidly tracking? Are you going to approach dieting with more of an intuitive eating style? Whatever the plan is, because a lot of plans can work for a lot of different people, whatever that plan is, you have to make sure that you trust it at the front end and give it time to actually get you where you wanna be at the back end. Emotional dieters can get into a lot of trouble here because after about the first two or three weeks of weight loss, when things seem to be going well, when you hit your first plateau, the initial thought is going to be, oh my goodness, this plan doesn't work for me anymore. I have to switch things up. The process of weight loss is very much time dependent. Don't fall for the trap that just because you're not losing weight at the same rate that you were at the beginning of the plan, that the plan is is somehow inherently wrong or not working for you anymore. The body starts to adapt to the lower level of calories. Weight loss will begin to slow. These are all normal, natural responses to a weight loss plan. So don't freak out. All you need to do is stick with the plan, provided that the plan was made intelligently at the beginning. There are a number of different YouTube channels, blogs, educational websites to teach you how to approach your nutrition. You have to do a little bit of searching, but once you find the plan, stick with it. If you're looking for videos, there's a ton on this channel. Subscribe and you can watch them all. Tip number two is going to be to lean on your best decision-making self. Okay, so what the heck does that even mean? People look at food as a way to cope with their emotions, which is totally natural. In a lot of different cases, they can be positive or negative emotions. I know for myself, I use food as a celebration. When things go well, I want to overindulge as a way to congratulate myself. If I get a promotion at work, if I get a new client, let's have a dinner party. Let's go out, let's go crazy. Every now and again, this can be a great break in your diet, but overall, we need to lean on the better decision-making that we can do when we are not emotionally attached to the food that we're eating. A couple practical ways to do this. Don't go grocery shopping when you're hungry. When you are hungry, you are more likely to lean on your emotional base self when you're making food choice. When you are hungry and you buy all of these hyperpalatable, saturated foods, when you are struggling on your diet, those Rice Krispies are are gonna be calling you from the pantry. I'm speaking from experience here. When you get into these emotional states, the first thing that you're gonna reach for is not the carrots and hummus that you've made a good decision to buy, but instead the bag of chips that are behind the carrots and hummus that are going to set you back on your diet. If you find yourself eating when you're sad or when you're bored, join the club. I have a huge problem with this. But one thing that I've done to combat this is make better decisions when I'm not sad and when I'm not bored so that I don't have those types of foods that really set me back on my diet in the house. I open the fridge and say, you know what? I'm not really hungry, I'm just kind of bored, and then I can move on with my day. This is a tactic that not enough people are leaning on. Lean on your best decision-making self. Before we get to the last tip, a quick plug. If you find yourself confused or bogged down by the mire of nutrition information on the internet, please take advantage of my services. You can reach out to me in my email, DM me on Instagram, join our Discord. It doesn't have to be formal coaching, it can be a question and answer. Anything that you have that you're confused about, I'd love to talk to you and try to set you on a straighter path so that you can have the success that you're looking for with your weight loss. Our last and final tip today is going to be finding what actually relieves stress for you. There are a lot of people that are spinning their wheels on their diet, thinking that they're doing the best they can without addressing their stress and stress relief. Stress is a diet 
killer. Not just overeating when you're stressed, but actually on a chemical level. Stress hormones, cortisol specifically, cause our body to hold on to fat when we really don't want to, which can cause us to get into a vicious cycle of being stressed, not losing fat because you're stressed, and then getting more stressed because you're not losing the fat when you're on a fat loss phase. It can be a diet ender. So you need to lean on stress relieving activities. Everybody thinks they know what relieves stress for them, but you have to do some self reflection, really understand what is going to be something that you can lean on in week eight, week nine, week 10 of a diet that will really, really help you relieve stress. I cannot give you those answers. You have to figure that out for yourself, but I want to impart on you the importance of actually finding some of those activities that are going to help you relieve stress to keep the cortisol levels down, to keep the binge eating during stressful episodes away so that you can continue to experience the success that you want to experience. I hope you found these three tips helpful. Implement one or all three of them and I promise you, you will have a better fat loss experience. They worked for me, they have worked for countless number of my clients. Now it's time to pair effective resistance training with your new weight loss tips. Click on this video right here to learn more about programming. Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you liked the video, give it a like. Get strong and stay strong.